So a new project. And then I'm going to, first of all, import the first character that I want. So I go to Merge Project and find the file that I want. So I'm going to use Thriller Part 3. And it opens up my FBX settings. You just want to leave these on the default settings. You don't really need to change anything. So just click OK. It takes a little bit of time to import it. Um, if you have this coming up, just say no, you don't want to reassign included text. And there we have our frames um, down in the timeline. Now I'm in animate layout so you can see the timeline. So you can zoom in and out of the timeline by clicking and dragging on this one. And you can move around the timeline by clicking and dragging on this one. So that allows you to see all the frames and to move the, the, the view around. OK, so what it's brought in are, are the rig, which are the bones or the skeleton of the character, and the skin or the, the, the flesh of the character, if you like. So what we'll generally be working with is the rig, because it's the rig that has the animation and then the skin just deforms around the rig. I'm just going to drag that down so you can see the character a bit better. And what we want to do is create what's called a motion clip. So this creates a clip that you can edit almost like video. So rather than trying to drag keyframes around and copy and paste keyframes, which tends to cause problems, you kind of bake them into a clip. So if I add that, um, I get these options as well. So I can bake the expressions automatically will choose the properties that are already animated. But if you wanted to add scale to that, you can click on that and it will add scale. But I'm just going to click on OK. And when I do, you'll notice a tag appears over here. OK, so this is the um, motion system tag, which we can see the properties of here in the properties panel. So the properties panel will update depending on what I click on. So it's showing me the rig. Now it's showing me the tag. Now, if I go back to the hips, I can also see the motion system properties in here as well. So that gives me some properties for the motion system. But just be aware that depending on what you click on, you'll see different things up here. So that's just important to be aware of. And you'll notice down in the timeline, it's also changed my, my view. Now, it's automatically changed it because I selected this view earlier. But if you don't see this view, go to view motion mode. Now, it will normally be on dope sheet mode, so you'll you'll just see this, which are my keyframes. So you need to be able to see the motion um, clips. So you go to motion mode, and that's in the view menu of the timeline, and that allows you to see the clips. And again, I can zoom in and out or move that around. Then what I want to do is move to the end of this and bring in. The next one. So I'm going to move to the end of the animation. Um, let's just have a look at the animation um, first of all. Now, you'll notice that if I play it, it plays for a while and then it stops and loops. And that's because I've set my um, preview duration to short duration. So just before we continue with this, I'll just show you how to change that. In the Properties panel, if you click on the Up button until you get to the Project Settings, this is where you set your preview minimum or maximum time. Now, I know that we want ours to be about, I think it was 1,800 frames. So I'm just going to change my maximum time to 1,800. And I'm also going to change, and you notice that suddenly that time becomes available here, so I can add my next clip. I'm also going to change my preview time to 1800. So now when I click on preview, it will play everything. Plus, it allows me to add other clips in. Now, you can you could have added the other clip in anyway, but you wouldn't have been able to play it. So that just enables you to be able to see all of the frames um, before we add the next one in. So I'm going to move to the end here. And then what I'm going to do is rename this. So Thriller 03, this is the actual motion clip. Now, this is almost like a repository for the motion clips. So we see it here, but we also see it here. This is our motion clip in the timeline. And this is our motion clip stored in the kind of motion clip repository. And this is important that the, you see the difference between these, because what we're going to do is bring in our next character. File menu, 
and merge project again. So I'm going to bring in this one, click OK. Now watch what happens up here when I do. So it's going to come up with the dialog box again, asking me if I want to um, reassign takes. And you'll see that a, a new one appears. Now I'm going to rename this one. So I'm going to call it Angie2. Um, we'll leave that named as it is because it's quite obvious which one's which. And you'll notice that this one hasn't got the motion tape. So what I'm going to do, and again, watch what happens here and down here when I do the next step, which is to go up here, go to animate, and go down to add motion clip. Again, you get the dialog box, so I'm going to click OK. OK. Now you'll notice it adds the motion clip and it also adds a new layer down here, which is our new one. And it also adds it over here. So I'm going to rename it over here, Thriller 4. And that renames it here as well. Now we've got them both here. We've also got them both here because we've got two characters. Now if I, um, let me see if I can zoom out so you can see both. So we've got two characters doing different animations at the moment. What we want is just one character doing one animation. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is just delete this one. We don't need this at all. So just hit backspace to delete that. And now if we zoom through, you'll see that only one character is animated. Now I can actually get rid of this second character. I don't actually need it. So I'm going to delete that. So I've now just got one character with one animation. But you'll notice over here, I've got the two motion clips. So now it's very easy just to go over here. And then I'm just going to click and drag Thriller 4 in and place it in there. OK, and I can just pull it up to meet that one. You'll see that it makes a connection when it meets. OK, so let's click and drag that to there. And then if we go back, You'll see, so what I'm going to do is just play it from here. Now you'll notice that it jumps at that point. So um, each animation starts from the origin point, which is this point in the center here. But what we can do is go into, remember we spoke about the motion clip settings up here. So it will normally be on the basic tab. And you'll just see these um, settings here where you can trim the, the motion, things like that, or add color labels to it. Um, you've also got the hierarchy tab, which shows um, what body parts are being animated by that motion clip. And then you've got the advanced tab. Now in the advanced tab, I can create what's called a pivot point. So if I click on create pivot, You'll notice up here now I've got a pivot point. And then if I go into my, select my hips um, and go into the properties, I can copy that value. So I'm going to copy the position of the hips. So I've got my pivot point, but if I go to paste, it pastes the position data of the hips at that frame into this frame. And that way we get a continuous movement, so we're not having to do any matching, which is a really nice um, way of doing it. So you just add a pivot point and copy and paste the position value that you want. Um, so if I play that now from about here. Now there's a slight jump there, but I can adjust that by... Um, just adjusting the pivot point. So if I want to adjust them even more, I can just literally move that pivot point to where I want it to be. Okay, so I want them to be slightly further forward and slightly further down. That's much better now, so it's much smoother transition.